Make a snack. Build your own Buddy the Elf with touch-sensitive talking, candy dispensing, and remote app activation using CircuitPython and the Circuit Playground Bluefruit. This Buddy the Elf build shouldn't require any soldering. Touch a bow to trigger a specific random Buddy phrase and get a Buddy wave. Hey! What's your name? My name's Buddy. Guess what? I love you! I love you! I love you! Or open the candy dispenser. Someone on the naughty list? You can use the free Bluefruit app to trigger remote sounds and actions. You sit on a throne of lies. Let's build. Now the electronics we'll use include the CPP or Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. You'll need a micro USB cable to connect this to your computer. You've got a couple of choices with speakers. You can get these ones with built-in alligator clips, or you can connect any speaker that's got a standard RCA jack, as long as you've got two additional alligator clips. If you want the no solder build, you'll need some screws and bolts, two micro servers, one to wave the hand and one to open the candy cane box, and you'll need two kinds of alligator clips. One with male leads at one end to attach from the servo to the CPB, and the other with clips on both ends to attach the capacitive touch pads on the CPB to the wire attached to the bow. You'll also want some copper wire or other conductive wire, wrapping paper and metallic bows, a glue stick, Velcro tape, packing tape, some boxes, one for the candy cane and one to hold the electronics. I used an old iPhone box and an old Adafruit box, and some flat cardboard. The color doesn't matter because you're going to wrap it up. You'll also want scissors, wire cutters and strippers, either a box cutter or a craft knife, glue or a hot glue gun to attach servos to your cutouts, some fishing line to link the arm to the servo, and some popsicle sticks to attach to the servo arms. You can search online to find an image of Buddy the Elf. I pasted mine into Mac Keynote, then I took a screenshot of his arm, then I pasted in the screenshot and used the Keynote Instant Alpha to remove parts of the image I didn't want. And if you're good at Photoshop, you don't have to use Keynote. Then I copied the edited arm, pasted it in next to my Buddy image, flipped it horizontally, then I found an image of a hand that matched Buddy's, moved the arm to the foreground, positioned the images just right, and then I had Buddy's hand for waving to cut out as well. Then print out the images, glue the back side to a piece of cardboard, and gently cut out the image using an X-Acto knife or craft knife. I got rid of the ragged edges with coarse sandpaper, and I ended up pasting another Buddy on top to get rid of any tears I made during the first cutout. To make the arms more durable, I measured and cut out popsicle sticks, both for the size of the arm as well as the place where I attached the arm to the body, and I hot glued the sticks to the back of the arm and figure cut out. I poked a hole through Buddy in the arm with a screwdriver, but I later found out that using a small drill bit worked even better. You'll also cut out the bottom half of Buddy's right arm, and I pasted another piece of green printout to cover up where you could see fingers on his waist. I also started off using these cardboard rivets for the joint rotation, but I replaced them with M3 screws that you can get at any hardware store. These were stronger, longer, and gave a much better rotation. You can also put some weight on the end of the arm so that it falls more easily. You could tape on some pennies. I just glued on some old round magnets that I had. Glue one of your servos to the back of Buddy's neck and his upper back. This one will be used to wave his arm. The servos will come with a couple of these plastic horns. Then I tied a knot in fishing line and glued this horn to the arm, then tied a knot in the other servo horn and attached this one to the servo that I glued to the body. I also looped the fishing line through the notch at the top of the servo. This gave a better wave angle for the fishing line. Then I gift wrapped the box. I glue sticked the wrapping paper to the box so that it would hold better. Then I poked a hole in the back of the box, poked the servo wires through the back of the box, and hot glued the servo to the side of the box. Then I glued the servo horn to popsicle sticks and push the horn back into the servo in the box. That creates the lid lift mechanism. So I've wrapped a piece of cardboard and attached five bows. These bows are going to be capacitive touch points that are gonna trigger Buddy to speak or to raise the candy box lid. Poke a hole near the base of each bow, then thread copper wire across the back of the cardboard and through the hole you just poked. And loop it around so that you can't see it, but that it touches a good portion of the bow so there'll be good contact for cap touch. And leave enough length on the wire so that you can attach them to an alligator clip. Use packing tape to secure the wire to the bottom of the wrapped cardboard. You want to make sure that these copper wires don't touch, otherwise it'll create a short. So the wiring on your CPB is going to be pretty tricked out. Let me talk you through how things are set up. First, the touch pads. So there is a touch pad associated with each of the five bows, and your code refers to them as touch pad 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we can see over here that touch pad 0 is clipped to A2, touch pad 1 to A3, touch pad 2 to A4, touch pad 3 to A5, and touch pad 4 to A6. 
Touchpad 4, instead of playing a sound, will activate the servo for the lid. Touchpad 3 generates a random sound, and Touchpad 0, 1, and 2 will play sound 0, 1, and 2. The speaker has two wires going from it. It's got its own separate power wires. So this wire here is plugged into a USB. My speaker actually can be wireless too, so I could charge it up. It's got an internal battery. The ground wire clips to the base of the RCA jack, and the very tip of the RCA jack clips to the audio out. Finally, there are the servo motors, and each of the servos has this triple wire coming out of it. And the three colors on the wire are brown for ground, red for power, and yellow for signal. I've clipped both power wires into V out. The signal for the wave servo, which is referred to in your code as wave underscore servo, is passed through A1, and the TX pad controls the lid servo. Now you can see I cut the whole ends off of the servo wires, I separated them, stripped the ends, and then used these bolts to attach them to the CPB. I did eventually solder these wires on because I take the lid off the box quite frequently to show students how this is put together, but it works just fine with this bolt-on no solder method. And if you didn't want to clip the connector off of the end of your servo, you could take three wires with pins on them, plug them into the holes in the servo connector, and then clip the other ends to alligator clips, or get wires like this with alligator clips on one end. So hopefully the diagrams are useful because this is what everything looks like when things are clipped on. It's tough to tell where stuff is, but everything here is exactly what you saw in the diagram. Make sure you've got your micro USB plugged into your CPB as well, because that's going to drive power. Then I'm going to tuck everything into my wrapped iPhone box. And the box has a slot cut in it so the wires can sneak through. I mounted Buddy by putting some Velcro tape on the back of him and the other end on the side of the box. Now that Buddy's all wired up, let's take a look at his code. You can find the code for this project at github.com slash Gallagher, that's spelled Gallaffer, slash Buddy dash these dash elf and if you go down in here you can click on code.py highlight the code copy it and paste it into moo you can see all the different things that we imported here the one thing that we didn't use in the playlist I created for learning circuit Python on the CPB is random and by importing random this is going to allow us to generate a random number so that we can select a random buddy sound to play we have some code to work with Bluetooth some code to work with the speaker and audio out and to set up our touch pads make sure that they're activated, set up the servos, set up the lid servo as well. Here are all of the buddy sounds. So if you decide you want to change the sounds and, and make a different list of sounds or reorder them, this is where you have to make the change. There's just a list and the list is named buddy sounds. Now your CPB has to have a WAV file with the exact spelling for each of the files that are listed in this list named buddy sounds. Now what I did was download these waves from some public sites on the internet. These need to be 16 bit or smaller wave files in mono, not stereo, at 22 kilohertz or less. And there's a tutorial on converting files in the playlist mentioned earlier. You don't want to use anything copyrighted for commercial use, but we're within fair use here because this is a non-commercial educational tutorial. Now down here I've got a start angle and an end angle. These are the two values I'm using for the wave servo. And you may want to change these if you find that these numbers don't work for the servo you're using for your build. We've got our function in here to play an audio file. Then I'll talk through these moves in just a bit as well. This is the detect touch and the open lid. But first let's look at the while true loop. So the way things work with Bluetooth is the device starts advertising itself so the Blue Fruit app can find it and connect. Now even while we're not connected, the device is going to continue to check to see if anything was touched. And this checking happens inside of the check touch function that I wrote. Now that's important because down here we have a portion of the function that says while BLE is connected. So once we're connected, we're going to be stuck inside this part of the code. We call check touch in our while Bluetooth is connected loop to make sure we're going to check the touch whether or not we are connected. Now scrolling up and looking at check touch, I put in some print statements here so you can see how things work if you run this with the serial monitor open. But touchpad number four opens the lid. Touchpad number three will generate a random number from sound three through the length of buddy sounds minus one. The reason why it's minus one is remember we're zero indexed. So the last sound is going to be whatever the length number is minus one. And once we get the random number, then we just go ahead and play that particular sound. And we don't play zero, one or two because those are attached with button zero, one or two. So now if we scroll up and take a look at the play file function, I've modified it just a bit here. So when we're ready to play a WAV file, we set up the file to play, and then we move the hand up. The hand initially is at the zero degree value, and then when we actually wave back and forth, we're from 50 to 135. So move up will move it from zero to 50. Move happens while the audio file is playing, and that goes from 50 to 135 and back, and then move back will return from 50 back to the zero angle position. And that's what you'll see if you read through these three functions here. The open lid function runs whenever you want to open the candy box lid. The zero angle is when the lid is fully open, 
115 is when the lid is closed. And again, you can change these values if you find something better for your servo. I immediately open it to angle zero, and then I take a 5 one hundredth of a second rest in between each angle as I go down to give the user enough time to reach in and grab some candy. Now if we scroll back down into our while true loop, once we're connected, we call check touch again. Now the reason why we have check touch and check touch here is we wanna make sure that check touch runs when we're not connected, but if we are connected, we wanna make sure that check touch can run as well. So even though we have Bluetooth connected, the user can still touch those bows. Now in addition to touching the bows, if, and if we scroll further down here, we see that we've got code that can detect and respond to a touch from any of the buttons in the Bluefruit app. For example, button one will play sound zero, button two will play sound one, button three will play sound two, button four will generate a random sound, the up button will open the lid, the down button plays the throne of lies naughty sound, the left button will play sound number four, and what I've done on the right hand side is I increased the threshold which makes the touchpads less responsive. And I did that because for some reason when I place this build on one of the desks at work, it's too sensitive and the touchpads keep going off. So if you have this occur, all you need to do is press the right button after connecting to Bluetooth and each press should increase the threshold until hopefully your device won't go off on its own. So if you pasted this code in fresh, now we can just go ahead and make sure that we save it to our CPB. I'm just going to double click on the tab up here, make sure that I'm inside of CircuitPy. I'm going to type in the name code.py. That's the name of any code that will execute as soon as the Circuit Playground Bluefoot is turned on. Click save, replace anything that's there and we're good to go. Let's try. So I cut out instruction labels and labels for each bow. Hey, what's your name? My name's Buddy. Best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Santa's coming, there's so much to do. Guess what? I love you, I love you, I love you! And Buddy was so popular that he'd only got one candy cane left. Hope you enjoy the build. Let me know if you create something from the tutorial. Feel free to share with others. Have a great Christmas.